Hello, my name is Walter McGorry and this is Call of the Runes and today we're talking about Kebo. Kebo is the seventh rune of the first ayat. It represents the letter G uh, in, in writing and literally it means gift. In both readings and in amulets, this is a rune of exchange, of giving something, but also getting something back, or getting something, but also giving something back. The uh, Norwegian and the Icelandic rune poems are based on the younger Futark. So what we'll see in a little bit is that these two will not include the Gable rune. Um, but with that being said, let us begin. So as I just said, uh, we only have the Anglo-Saxon rune poem for Gable, and that goes as follows. Generosity brings credit and honor, which support one's dignity. It furnishes help and sustenance to all broken men who are devoid of aught else. Generosity is very ingrained in the Nordic mindset, and that can be seen in Havamal 41-42, uh, which I will quote now. French shall gladden each other with arms and garments, as each for himself can see. Gift givers' friendship are the longest found, if fair their fates may be. To his friend a man, a friend shall prove, and gifts with gifts requite. But men shall mocking with mocking answer, and fraud with falsehood meet. So we see here very clearly that if you want to have a good relationship, and good kinship with your friends, then you both give and receive gifts. This is a social liberation between people, not because of this reason, but because you want to, because he is your friend. On the other hand, if you give mocking to somebody, then that is also the gift that you will return, or the other way around. If somebody mocks you, you will mock them. Fraud with falsehood meet. Uh, hospitality and kinship often become two of the most important uh, virtues in any culture that arises in harsh climates, may it be in extreme heat or extreme cold, as it is in the case with Scandinavians. And therefore we exchange a gift for a gift, and that gift doesn't have to be immediately repaid. But if somebody comes, and in the rune poem about kennels we talked about hospitality a little bit, if hospitality doesn't have to be necessarily immediately repaid to your host, but it's expected that if you have the opportunity that you can also pay it forward. You should always strive to give back as much as you receive, a gift for a gift, because otherwise the gift turns sour. Uh, victory in battle, successful harvest, happiness in love, great wealth, or many children are in this sense all gifts of the gods. And if the gift is not uh, given forward or it's not repaid in some way, then it can become cursed or it can become sour, as I just said. Um, and so those who receive gifts from the gods are expected to pay it forward. Um, in charms and amulets, we can also see this. Uh, on a runestone in Skeptunieres, it reads the enigmatic text, uh, Gift of Mine. Uh, the rune stone is U359, uh, and this gift of mine can mean several things. Uh, this can either be a place where a blot was held. Blot means to bleed, literally, or a, a blood. Um, but it is a place where people give their offerings. So a blot is a offering to a god. It can be to a god, can also be to a land spirit, can also be potentially to a giant. There is some, some historical precedence for that as well. Um, it could be that this blot, this stone itself is the blot, so that this stone is an offering to whatever land spirit that lives here. It could also be that this is a monument to a departed. A uh, departed ancestor in Scandinavian or Germanic mythology uh, could still have a great influence on the living. In several ways, uh, for instance, uh, they could bestow upon you their guardian spirit, their Filkia. And I'll explain about uh, Filkia a little bit later in the video. The Flatterbok also tells of Halbjorn uh, trying to compose a poem on Thorleifr's uh, honor. 
Thorneifer was a poet, and however, uh, Hal Bjorlund has troubles. He can't get the poem written. He can't get the inspiration. So he sits on his grave mouth, and in his dream, Thorneifer appears, and because Hal Bjorlund was trying to give him this gift, uh, Thorneifer gives back a gift. He gives Hal Bjorlund his um, inspiration his power of poetry he passes that forward and from that day on Halbjorn is also a renowned poet so he gets the gift of poetry in return of the gift that he's trying to give uh, also each family had collective guardian spirits uh, called the Ahamenga in Surin Saga such spirits uh, visit uh, Gisli and they take the shape of two ancestors. Uh, both of them advise him on what takes is the best course of action. So in that way, you can see that even those people who have passed away can still give their influence, give their advice, uh, give their good luck, so to speak, when Hamingya is sort of uh, sometimes translated as their good luck, uh, through to the next generations. But in return, they also require some uh, reverence, a blot, uh, some some ritual. Uh, a particularly uh, renowned man or woman um, could also draw sacrifices to their graves from more than just their own family. And over time, such a person could develop such a cold status that they would turn into a landvatir or an alfar. So just by um, um, by getting so much attention, getting so much sacrifice, uh, they would ascend or become a spirit of the land who protects the people around them. And those examples show that uh, the Gabo concept was not limited to the mortal realms. The idea of gifts of social lubrication, uh, relying heavily on the reciprocation to keep civilization turning, permeates all level of life and death of the mundane and the divine in Norse mythology. In cultural relevance, uh, we can see this as well, uh, because uh, Tacitus also describes uh, the exchange of gifts in Nordic countries and how prevalent it was. He made the following note. No people are more addicted to social entertainments or more liberal in the exercise of hospitality. To refuse any person, whatever admittance under their roof, is accounted flagellous. No one makes a distinction with respect to the rights of hospitality between a stranger and an acquaintance. The departing guest is presented with whatever he may ask for, and with the same freedom, a boon is desired in return. They are pleased with presents, but think no obligation incurred when they give or receive. So this is important. The gift giving is implied to go both ways. It is not, I give you a gift because I want to something in return. I give you a gift out of my free will and you give me a gift out of your free will. It is not a obligation on itself, but it's the innate desire to give back to what you are given, is what is said at least by uh, Tacitus in his Germania 21. Uh, this might be an outsider's exaggeration of these social bounds, but again, in harsh uh, winter, you need these. You need to be able to rely on your neighbors, on your community. If you, for whatever reason, could not get your harvest going, uh, are out, out in troubles during the winter, there's no way to come back to that except for leaning on the people around you. It is uh, no coincidence then that the Old Norse word for gibble, gift, can have three meanings. Firstly, it can mean a literal gift, one person gives to another. Secondly, it can mean a natural gift, like the gift of poetry given by the gods. And lastly, it can mean a wedding. In Norse context, all three of these are social commitments, and a gift demands a gift. Social responsibility to your neighbors shows that you will stand together. Uh, a social bond with the gods that assures their bounty, and finally the social commitment of marriage that makes two families one. Um, in conclusion, uh, Gebo is a rune of balance. It's the balance of giving and of receiving. Uh, in doing so, Kinsab grows, and 
in the community and in the relationships between humans and spirits. The exact shape of Gable, which is the X, is, uh, is symmetry and that echoes this balance. What this balance exactly means or what this gift is in a reading or an amulet depends on what runes are next to it. So, for example, if you would combine Gebo with Tewans, the Justice Rune, it can mean that a legal dispute is balanced. When it is paired with Berkana, the Birch Rune, it can indicate that either a child is on its way or the bond that you have with a parent. When combined with Feu, the Cattle Rune, this room might mark a financial gift coming your way or a financial responsibility that you still have to give. Uh, that is the complete chapter on Gable. If you like this video, please like, uh, subscribe and share. If you would like to learn more uh, or if you would like to support this channel, uh, everything that I said plus a whole bunch more can be found in Call of the Runes, uh, the book. And I hope to see you again. Until next time. Goodbye.